are back here at Hollywood Smoke in the beautiful city of Santa Monica. I'm Steve Kim, joined by Michael Montero and Michael Baca. Welcome to another edition of 10 Count. And ladies and gentlemen, the fight that we've been waiting for November 21st from the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas. It takes place for the WBC middleweight title. Miguel Cotto defends against Saul Alvarez. Michael, a real quick question. Um, Miguel Cotto's recent ascension, is it a real rejuvenation under the stewardship of Freddie Roach? Or is it a byproduct of great matchmaking engineered by Freddie Roach? I think it's a little bit of both, and Freddie Roach is a master of that. Um, I, you know, we've seen Miguel switch back to the fundamentals a little bit. You know, he's, he's had better balance. He's thrown his punches with better leverage. He's gone to the body more. But he hasn't been fa facing a murderer's row of opponents. He's drained some opponents down in weight. So I do think it's a little bit of both. And that's why I favored Canelo big in this fight when it was first announced. I thought Alvarez actually would stop Cotto late. But given uh, the recent interview with, with Canelo, I believe, last week, where he talked about Triple G, it seems his focus might be ahead of Cotto. And I'm starting to wonder if he's taking the fight lightly. Um, you know what? I think that's a little unfair. Um, he was asked a question. Okay. And he just okay. answered. It's not like he addressed it like a State of the Union. So I, I don't know. I think that's a little bit unfair. Michael, is this a must-win situation for Canelo? Because we know Miguel Cotto. I think he's going to the Hall of Fame, one of the best Puerto Ricans ever. I think he's on that Mount Rushmore. He's won some big fights. He's lost big fights. But if Saul Alvarez, in his second time out on the biggest platform, can't deliver, is he just a good-looking kid who's marketable? Maybe. Um, must win? I don't think so. Miguel Cotto, future Hall of Famer. Fantastic fighter. Um, you know, in the, the latter years of his career, he's kind of been rejuvenated under Freddie Roach. He's a little lighter in the feet. He looked great against Gill, but it is Danny Gill. Um, Canelo's not in a must-win must situation. I think he has a bright future, win or lose. Uh, I think his effort um, will be looked at, and, you know, I think he'll be doing fine, but... I think this is the fight where we see and question whether or not he needs a new trainer. Yeah, this is a referendum on the Reynosos. Yeah. And it may not be a must-win situation for Canelo. Uh, I think it'd certainly be a hell of a good idea for Golden Boy if they came out, because this has been a rough stretch. To their credit, they are making real yes. fights. They're yes. reaching across the aisle like Tip O'Neill. Yep. And they're the one company that I'm like, huh, are you consistently making fights that are in your favor 80 to 20? Or are you making fights for us where we're like, oh, we want to see that. And I give them credit for that. But Canelo is the foundation. That's their cleanup hitter. And if they need a fight, this is one. I don't think they expected Victor Postal to upset Matisse. They probably were not expecting David Lemieux to beat Golovkin. This is the one they need. And here's one question that I have about Canelo Alvarez. If Miguel Cotto is a reasonable facsimile of what we think he is, let's say they have turned back the clock, how does he do in the late stretch? Because one thing about Cotto, we know that he's seasoned. We know that he's very accomplished. We're going to find out, Michael, how real is Saul Alvarez on this night. Yeah, I think it's very clear that Cotto is going to actually challenge him physically. Mm -hmm. I think Floyd challenged him mentally. He played games with him. It was just a chess match. Just matchup. froze him. Just froze yeah, him. And it, it, Canelo was way too green for that fight. He had fought one top opponent at that point, Austin Trout, and I thought it was a draw in terms of rounds, 6-6, mm. six, six, their fight. But what's, what's going to be interesting for me is can Cotto keep up with the youth and strength yeah. of Alvarez late? If this fight was several years ago, I may lean toward Cotto, but I just think if this thing goes late, I just think youth's going to be served. Cotto's been in so many wars, so many tough yeah. fights, it's going to start to show up. I think one thing Alvarez has to do, enforce his youth. Exactly. D don't wait. Don't think. Yep. Let it go. Pound the body early. And you know what? You bring a good point about the Reynosos. They've been successful. I mean, here's a guy they built from scratch. You have that one loss to an all-time great fighter in Mayweather, and all of a sudden, people start to question if you know how to throw or teach a simple jab. Uh, I think it's going to be an interesting chess match. I know one thing, Michael, then talking to Freddie Roach last year, we did an interview. He's not just confident about this fight. He is absolutely sure that it's a blowout for Miguel Cotto. One thing about Freddie, though, I call him Freddie Trolch. He says things to get a reaction out of people. Do you think there's a part of him that's playing mind games with that camp? Definitely. Um, and 
he's always confident in his fighters. And he's confident in himself, Freddie Roach. Yeah. And, yeah, of course, he says things to, you know, people are whisper, whispering in Canelo's ear, like, hey, maybe, you know, it's going to be a tough fight, you know? Um, I, I, I really do think this is going to be the fight of the year. That's my bold prediction. I don't make a lot of them. I think this is the fight of the year. Uh, it's evenly matched. Um, they came together at the perfect time for the WBC title. I'm not going to call it a middleweight title, but it's for the title. Yeah. It's for the 155-pound undisputed champion of the world. Now, let, <laughs> yeah. let's, say, let's say that happens. Your forecast comes correct, and it truly is an event that lives up to the billing. I think something very interesting happens that's fortuitous for everyone involved. They now have a natural out to avoid Gennady Golovkin. I've said for a while, um, these two guys are big enough. They have the marketability and the profile. They transcend championship belts. A guy like Golovkin needs every belt he can get. That's the reality. Canelo can dump a belt. Cotto can dump a belt. And they can have a rematch. As far as I'm concerned, they might be able to do a best of seven. I mean, let's just yeah. face it. Yeah. A close competitive fight, win or lose, for either side, I think might be the best result because I think come next year, they could do it again with or without the WBC strap. Yeah, it's, this fight draws closer. You know, I, I tend to agree with you that a really, really close decision that's either way. controversial, yeah. either way, leads to a rematch next year. Yeah. That WBC belt gets dumped. Meanwhile, if you're Gennady, he can collect that WBC title, and you can start building toward a, let's say, Canelo mm -hmm. Golovkin fight in 2017. Everybody's happy, especially HBO. Uh, who, Michael, in your opinion, is more likely to face Golovkin in due time? Cotto or Canelo? Canelo. I don't think Didn't Cotto, even hesitate. Clearly. <laughs> I don't think clearly. Cotto gets it within an arm's reach of Golovkin at all. And, you know, he doesn't really need to. He's already established a fine career. He's uh, honestly, I think it's a mismatch. Golovkin's that much bigger. Um, I'm fine with it. Cotto, I mean, Canelo, Golovkin is the fight. Hopefully in 2016 or early 2017. All right, that's it for this segment of the 10 Count on Steve Kim. On behalf of Michael Baca and Michael Montero, to the next round, goodbye, everybody.